So in the last video, we talked about kinetic and potential energy, um, specifically gravitational potential energy. Remember that gravitational potential energy is dependent on the object's height above the ground. So in this video, we're going to consider elastic potential energy. Let me give you some examples of elastic potential energy. When I um, pull back a rubber band, it's stretched out, right? And if you let it go, it would shoot forward and have kinetic energy. So when it's um, stretched out, it now has potential energy, elastic potential energy. Other examples are if you stretch out a bungee cord, jump on a trampoline, or compress a spring. All of those scenarios, you have to do work to change it from its natural position to either like a stretched out or compressed position. So let's consider what happens when we compress a spring, for example. So the spring might look something like this. Okay, and then let's say that here's the ground. Let's say the spring is attached to a wall. Okay, so that would be the spring at its natural position, some length here. Now, if I compress the spring, it might look something like this. And I compress it some distance. Okay, and now it's there. So the distance I compress it is equal to that, and we'll call it x. So this is a distance from its equilibrium point. Notice that I have to apply, I would have to apply a force to compress the spring this distance. Otherwise, it just stays at this natural length. So interestingly, um, the force that I apply is directly proportional to the compression of the spring, meaning that if I apply twice the force, the spring will compress twice the distance. Or if I apply half the force, it compresses half the distance. So Hooke's law relates force and distance, and it's actually F is equal to negative kx, and I'll define these terms. So x is distance from e your equilibrium point, in the case of this example this was x, F is your force, and K is the spring constant. So this is your spring constant. And all that is, is that, you know, different types of springs, springs that are made out of different materials, are, you know, harder or easier to compress. Um, so that's usually just given to you, or you have to solve for it sometimes. So the last piece to consider here is the negative. Why is it negative kx? So when I compress the spring, I apply a force to the left in this direction. Okay, but we notice that after some point, the spring stops accelerating to the left. Well, we know that force equals mass times acceleration, so if I'm applying a force, the spring should just keep accelerating. What happens is that the spring applies a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the right. Okay, remember um, Newton's third law states that for every action force, there's a reaction force that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, and that's what's happening here. There is a reaction force that's equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, so the net forces, these two forces right here, cancel out, and overall the force on the spring is zero. That explains why the spring doesn't continue to accelerate left. So really Hooke's law written like this is giving me the force of the spring, the restorative force. That's the force in blue right here. Okay, so I'm gonna be a little bit more specific and say that F for the restorative force is equal to negative Kx. But the force of compression, the force that I actually apply, is equal to positive Kx. 
Okay, so it's equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So now let's consider the work done on this spring. So we've already established that the force of compression is equal to k times x. So I'm going to graph this. I'm going to put x, which remember is just distance from equilibrium on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, I'm going to have force. I know that if, I, if my distance from equilibrium is zero, the force that I'm applying is zero, so I start at the origin, and I just have a line. Thinking about this, just as a side note, the slope of this line is k, so slope equals k, okay, um, and let's try and figure out what the work I've done on this spring is. Well, we know that work is equal to force times displacement. And we've learned that in the past couple of videos. So looking at this graph, I could see that, let's say take a point here, let's call it x sub 1. This is my displacement. And the work, or the force that I have applied is equal to this point. This height right here is the force. Okay, so if I could find this area right here, that would give me the work that I applied to compress the spring that distance. So looking at it slightly bigger, this is my distance, d, and here is the height, which is equivalent to the force that I would need to apply. And this whole area, highlighted in green, is equal to the work needed to compress the spring that distance. So, I see that to find this area, this is simply a triangle, right? Highlighted in yellow here. Okay, and you probably know that area of a triangle is one half base times height. So area equals one half base times height. So what's the base? The base corresponds to x, which is the distance, right? This x right here. And what's the height? Well, the height corresponds to the y-axis, which is f. We know that this is the height. But what this really is, if I want to leave it in terms of x, is kx. So this equals kx, right? And we also know that because we know that force equals kx. So instead of writing 1 half x times f, I'm going to write 1 half x times kx. Okay, and I can simplify that down, and I get that it's equal to 1 half kx squared. So that's the error under the curve, but that's also equal to the work. It's work done to compress the string, spring and distance x. Now, in the last video, we learned about conservation of energy, and we know that if we apply or do some work on an object, that actually equals the potential energy of that object. So the potential energy of the spring, PE of spring, is equal to 1 half kx squared. So really, to summarize, two important formulas is the force of any spring following Hooke's law is equal to negative kx, and that's the restorative force, the force that the spring applies onto your hand if you're compressing it, and the work and the PE of the spring. So work equals potential energy of the spring. And we just arrived, it's equal to one half 
kx squared. Okay. So in this video, we're going to do a quick sample problem um, so you can see how you would apply this. And then I think we will wrap up energy and work.